Hello, this is Kathy, and we're back for Lecture 2 of Assignment 1. In Lecture 1, we created a template for our introduction to the tools of Illustrator, and in this lecture, you're going to learn how to fill the boxes with the required tools. The first box is to be filled with line tools, and we're going to explore line a little bit here. We're going to start with the line segment tool, which is hidden underneath this stack. With the line segment tool, you're simply going to click and drag, and you will get a line segment. A line segment that can have any kind of stroke applied to it, and you learned a lot about that in the first lecture. Let's go up to, the, we'll make sure the stroke icon is on top here. We'll go up to uh, choose, let's say, a middle gray stroke. We'll make it nice and thick so that we can give it a an interesting profile and see it a little bit. We'll give it a width profile and there it has a little bit of personality now. Like any stroke, the strokes made with the line segment tool can be given any sort of value or um, or uh, brush stroke, brush configuration that you like. We're going to look underneath there and find the arc tool which is a way of making curves and I'm just going to make a little arc that goes over my line segment. I'm overlapping them because the assignment requires that, as you'll remember. And again, with the arc tool, I can give it a, um, let's give it a pattern stroke this time. I'm going to click the swatch libraries and look for some patterns that might be interesting to use. Let's try basic graphics textures. Now this uh, texture won't show up unless I give my stroke a little bit more thickness, so I think that's the first thing I'll do. I'll make the stroke a little weightier. I will stroke it with a pattern. There we go. I'm going to move this out of the way so it doesn't overlap my um, uh, boxes here. So let's try something from else here. Let's try the spiral tool which is underneath these tools. I'm going to click and drag and get a fun little spiral here. By default of course it's going to use the same stroke as the one that I just chose but I can change that and you while it's selected use another stroke. Let's try this one or let's explore let's see here some of the calligraphic strokes here. We'll look in this brush library under artistic, artistic calligraphic, and let's try this stroke here for that spiral. We'll give it a, whoops, it's applying that calligraphic brush over the um, pattern stroke. I'll give it a dark gray stroke so that we can see it just a little bit better. There we go. So there are many, many things that we can do with um, brush strokes, with calligraphic brushes, with um, values and patterns to make the lines a little bit more interesting. Let's take the black selection tool and select some of these lines here. I'm going to alt drag this spiral that I just made. Hold the alt key down and drag it to make a copy. And I'm going to move that copy around a little bit. I'm going to make another one here. Alt dragging one more time. And I'm going to take the last one that I made and change its stroke to back to a basic stroke in basic stroke, there we go, <laughs> in black. So now you'll see that that particular spiral, I'm going to click away to deselect, has changed its character quite a bit. Let's take that spiral and change its proportion as well. We'll move it like that. Let's take this spiral, this big fat gray one, and lower its opacity until it's almost invisible. Very, very dim. We'll select away to see what we've got. And now we've got some interesting things happening. Again, you'll notice that I have been careful to let my strokes overlap the edges of the box and to overlap each other. All right, let's try a few more tools here. We're going to try the pencil tool next. The pencil tool happens to be on top because I was using it recently, but it normally hides underneath this tool called the shaper tool. We don't want that one right now. We want the pencil tool, so dig down under there and find it. The pencil tool works 
very much like the uh, brush tool in Illustrator. I'm going to give, give it a nice black stroke so we can see it here and maybe make it just a little bit thicker. And I'm going to draw with it very much the way you would draw with the paintbrush tool. I'm just making a little scribbly line in um, with, on the side here with my pencil tool. So again, we can take that line, we can uh, distort it, we can copy it by alt dragging it. We can take one of those lines, the one that's um, selected here, and change its opacity. We can take, um, let's see, let's take another line here. And this one is a little bit too big and it's hiding everything that's under it. So I'm going to give it a softer stroke here and see what happens to it. There we go. And now I can see what I've got going here a little more. You are required to make 10 lines in this um, box. You're supposed to use the pencil tool, the line segment, and you may also use the arc and spiral tools. You're supposed to use calligraphic brushes, and I hope that you remember to, where to find those. The calligraphic brushes can be found under the um, uh, brush menu here in the libraries, and there are a lot of other wonderful uh, decorative brushes that you can uh, try down here. The decorative scatter brushes are really fun. Um, I've got one of those, I think, in this, in this, uh, yeah, tiny stars. Let's see if we can uh, make a line here and fill it with tiny stars. <laughs> okay, one more line segment. We will give that one a tiny star stroke. There you go. So that's a scatter, a scatter stroke. And when I select away from it, you'll see that the blue line disappears and just the tiny stars are left. That's a line to Illustrator. Okay, now it's time to trim our lines. Once we've got 10, I wasn't counting, but you will count on your on yours. <laughs> now that we're going to trim our boxes, we are going to learn how to use clipping mask. This is probably the most difficult thing you'll learn on this uh, lecture, but we're going to repeat it six times, so you'll get lots of chance to practice it. Clipping mask is a way to use one Illustrator shape to trim a bunch of others, very much uh, the same way that you'd use a cookie cutter to trim a big, complicated, messy, massive cookie dough. So the first thing we're going to tell Illustrator is what the cookie cutter is. We're going to use the black selection tool to select the box itself. That's our cookie cutter. We're going to go up here to the top menu and we're going to select Object, Arrange, Bring to Front. Now, if my square had a fill, which it happens not to, we would see that filled square on top of all the other objects that are lying there, um, and that's fine. If you happen to have a white fill in your box, you can still use it as a clipping mask. Don't worry about it at all. But, the, uh, but mine does not, and, and so very little seems to have changed, but now in Illustrator's mind, this box has become a clipping mask because I selected it, and I brought it to the front. That gives Illustrator a clue that I mean to clip with it. Now I'm going to tell Illustrator what the cookie dough is. I'm going to take again the black selection tool and I'm going to draw a selection marque around everything that I want to clip with that box. And now I'm simply going to go object, clipping mask down at the bottom here, make. And when I do that, you will see that all those objects disappear except where they're in the box. I'll select away so that you can see what's going on. Nicely trimmed. You've probably noticed that there is one unfortunate difficulty, and that is my box has disappeared. The box um, disappears because Illustrator takes away the stroke and the fill from any shape that you use as a clipping mask. Now we have to put that box back on, however, so that this uh, file meets the requirements for assignment one, because that box is important. So once Illustrator has clipped a group of shapes like this, and you can see as I mouse over them that they're all still there, even uh, way out in the, on the edges here. Once Illustrator has clipped them, it groups them. And once objects are grouped, they can no longer be selected individually with the black selection tool. 
You may remember uh, from last time that the white selection tool, the direct selection tool, will drill down into a group of objects and select one object, or it will drill down into one object and select, say, one anchor point out of it. We're now going to choose the direct selection tool, and we're going to go back and select just the box, just its path alone. Now we get a chance to stroke it. So you want to make sure that the stroke icon is in front here. Find black somewhere in one of the um, palettes or color guides on your screen. Uh, this is a handy place for it for now for me. And I'm clicking black. I'm going to select away to make sure that it all worked. And lo and behold, my black stroke is back and everything looks great. If that seemed complicated and you're worried that you'll forget how to do it, don't because we're going to practice it a few more times. Let's go on now to box two. Box two requires you to use rectangles with, with uh, straight and rounded corners. And the rectangle tool is simply the same good old tool that we use to make those boxes. Underneath the rectangle tool, there's also a rounded rectangle tool. And if you're making a lot of rounded rectangles, I suppose that's the one to use. But you can make both straight and rounded rectangles with the regular rounded rect or rectangle tool. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make a bunch of rectangles here. You'll notice as before that I am taking care to overlap them with each other and overlap them with the edges of my box. Overlapping is a very, very important tool for composition and for creating space, and I want you to get in the habit of it right away. So the uh, rectangles have to be filled with at least three different strokes and three different fills, and some of them should have square corners and some of them should have rounded corners. Let's take a look at our rectangles in the transform window. The transform window has kind of gotten hidden underneath my <laughs> other windows here, so I'm going to drag it out if I can without closing it. There we go. There's the transform window. Now the transform window is open all the way so that you can see rectangle properties. If it isn't open all the way, simply click these little uh, triangles here until it does open all the way. We can see the width and height. We can see the x and the y uh, dimensions. Um, measuring on this corner, of course, because that's the one we've got uh, clicked. But uh, more to our purposes now, we're seeing the um, corner properties of the rectangle. So I'm going to drag on this little round button here, and you're going to notice that the um, corners of my rectangle become rounded. And then you'll notice that the corner properties of the rectangle change here in the transform window. I have them all locked together. Now, if I were to unlink them by clicking on that lock so that there's a strike through it, then I would be able to take just one corner and change its radius without affecting the others. I could take it up or I could take it down so that it gets closer to being square. In fact, I can make it zero so that it is a square corner, and you will see that that upper left corner changed over here in my file. Let's select another box with the black selection tool and mess with its corners a little bit. We can, now that we've got them unlocked, we can do different things to different corners. And um, there are several corner types that we can choose, again, by holding down the little triangle here underneath corner types. So we can make um, the lower left corner an inverted curve. And as we take its radius up, Whoops, I, I lost my inverted curve, or maybe I picked the wrong one. There we go. Let's make it an inverted curve. There we go. So that you can see um, the different things that can happen on different corners. We can make the upper right corner of that box a chamfered curve or chamfered corner. And now that it's chamfered, I believe, now you can see that that corner is cut off uh, at a chamfer. So. Just like all the other boxes and strokes that we've created so far, we can give each of these rectangles a stroke and a fill. And of course, we must in order to um, satisfy the assignment. So we've got some nice uh, gray fills over here from the basic textures. And maybe I'll use, um, oh, whoops, I need to bring my fill icon to the front. Maybe I will use one of these here to fill that rectangle that I've got selected. And then let's bring its stroke icon to the front 
and fatten up its stroke a little bit so that we can see it and we can give that a pattern too. Might be fun to give that a gradient. Let's put a gradient on it by double-clicking the gradient tool and opening the gradient window. And we have to choose either a linear or a radial gradient. I think linear might work better for this. And now we have a gradient that fills that stroke. So have some fun playing with the uh, possibilities on your um, See, I better select a different rectangle here so I can get these black selection tool <laughs> so I can get them all filled. So we'll, uh, we'll give them all some uh, stroke patterns. I'm going to make the stroke a little bigger again so that we can see the stroke pattern that I filled it with. Now I can fill the inside of the rectangle by bringing the fill icon to the front. And I'll give this a very modest uh, gray fill. Um, let's select with our black selection tool, let's select this critter here and let's see what other options we've got. And let's look at um, decorative legacy patterns and see what they look like. Now a lot of these patterns are in color. If we choose to use a pattern that is in color, we must grayscale the thing at the end. And maybe I'll just show you how to do that now. We'll fill it. Got my fill icon in the front. So we'll fill it with a red and yellow pattern here. This pattern is illegal for our assignment, but it sure is snappy looking. And we will give it a stroke that has, let's say, um, let's use a pattern for the stroke too. Let's use this nice plaid stroke and make it. Okay, so now in order to submit this assignment for full credit, we have to grayscale that. So while it's selected, I'm going to go edit. Edit colors <laughs> and convert to grayscale. And then I still get my patterns and my textures. I lose my glorious color, but that's a good thing in this case. All right, I'm going to select this last piece, quickly give it a fill. Now I'm happy. Well, I've got all my, I think I'll give it a little bit of a lowered opacity so that other things can be seen through it. There we go. Now I've got all my rectangles ready to crop with the clipping mask. And I'm sure you remember just how this clipping mask works. The first thing we're going to tell Illustrator is, what's the cookie cutter? The box. So we select the box with the black selection tool. We bring the box to the front by going Object, Arrange, Bring to Front. We can also uh, right click if you have a, a Windows type of mouse or alt click, whoops, sorry, control click, um, and, and then you can bring to front. All I can do right now is undo bring to front. But um, Now that I've told Illustrator what the um, cookie cutter is, I'm going to tell it what the cookie dough is by drawing a selection marque around all these objects that I want to clip with the clipping mask. And I'm going to go Object, Clipping Mask, Make. Then I'm going to take my, first I'll select a way to make sure it all clipped, looks good. I'm going to take my white selection tool and select only the path. Then I will be able to bring the stroke icon to the front, select black, restore my stroke, and move on to the third square. The third square requires me to use the ellipse tool to create circles and ellipses. And again, I'm going to draw them simply by clicking and dragging. If I hold the shift key down while I drag, I will get a perfect circle. In fact, that's all I can get. Remember that the shift key constrains. It will constrain a rectangle to a square, an ellipse to a circle, a line segment to 45 degrees or 90 degrees or 0 degrees. Um, very, very important keyboard shortcut. So let's make a few more a little, um, I'll make a circle here. And I will make another ellipse. Now I'm going to take my black selection tool and I'm going to tilt some of these by getting that little rotate icon there. 
I'm going to click on this one and, and uh, hover outside one of these corner anchor points until I get that little rotating icon. And of course it doesn't do me any good to rotate a circle and if I distort it I simply make it into an ellipse of course so I will control Z that or uh, command Z if you're on a Mac. I can also, while I've got the black selection tool, I can alt drag some of these so that I have more things to work with if I wish. And then of course I'm going to give them each a different stroke and a different fill and explore the many possibilities of Illustrator. Then when I'm done I'm going to select my path, the box itself, object arrange, bring to front. I'm going to draw a selection mark here around everything, object clipping mask, make. Then I'm going to take my white selection tool, deselect everything, and go back and select only the path so that I can restore the path. Now I didn't make um, the fills and strokes here that you need to make. I took a shortcut so that you uh, can see me make clipping mask again very quickly. You will need to fill these and stroke them. I can go back and fill and stroke individual objects in here by using the white selection tool. If I were to select anything in here I would select everything if I'm using the black selection tool. And so if I were to um, try to change one stroke, I would change them all. So I'm going to try to, I, I'm going to just uh, adjust the stroke and fill on one of these objects by selecting it. Let's pick this one here. By selecting it with the um, white selection tool. Let's bring the fill icon to the front and give it a, a checkerboard fill here. Let's bring the stroke icon to the front and give it no stroke. So now we're going to go on to the polygon tool in this box. I'll let you finish up the, um, your own work on the ellipses. With the polygon tool, which is underneath the ellipse tool, you may also use the star tool for this one, we're going to create some different sided figures. The default is a hexagon. If you um, use the arrow keys as you drag your hexagon either up or down you can give it more sides until it almost looks like a circle or fewer sides until it looks like a triangle and I am simply pressing the um, arrow keys on the keyboard as I drag my shape. Once you let go of the shape the arrow keys won't change it. At that point you'll have to change the number of sides by going up to the polygon properties in the transform box and you can change that triangle to a square by clicking the arrow up. You can change it to a pentagon or back to a hexagon or all the way to a duodecahedron or whatever you call it. So um, that's how you work with the polygon tool. Underneath it is the star tool. Again the default um, star is five-pointed. You can take it down to a triangle. That's the, um, the lowest you can go of course or you can take it up to something that looks like a um, sea urchin and I am simply tapping on the up arrow on the um, keyboard here as I drag my star. Just like any of the other objects you can uh, distort these by pulling on them, selecting them, and uh, you can change their size without distorting them by holding down the shift key as you pull on the um, corner anchors. So you want several objects in there and you're um, going to stroke them and fill them again just as before and I'm not going to go through all that this time because I know you know how to do that now but I do want to show you next how to uh, use the work tool on them. You are required after you finish uh, creating your different sided polygons to um, warp some but not all of them. So I'm going to make a few more polygons here. I'm going to make another little star. And I'm going to make this with a lot fewer arms and legs on it. There we go, another star. I'm going to make a, with the polygon tool, I'm going to make um, a triangle. There we go. So I've got a bunch of little critters here. I'm now going to choose some, but not all, of them and warp them with the warp tool.
I'm going to choose them by selecting them. I've got one that's already selected. If I hold down the shift key, I can add to that selection. So I'm going to select, let's see, this one that I've already kind of distorted, and this triangle and this hexagon. Those three are the only ones that I'm going to warp. You should have a couple at least that you don't warp so that I can tell that you knew how to select some specially to warp. The warp tool is underneath the width tool. And uh, the width tool looks like a little squashy tulip. The warp tool looks like a piece of cheese with a bite out of it. It's right underneath there. You're going to select the warp tool. If you double click it, just like most of these tools, you'll get a, um, an options box that allows you to change the brush size and everything. And maybe I will uh, make these a little smaller since my little critters are kind of small here. OK, so I've got a. a um, as you can see, a little warpy cursor, a cursor with a little balloon around it. And I'm simply going to click and drag. I'm going to drag that thing through my critters here just to see what happens. And when then I'm going to let go. I'm going to take my black selection tool and select away to deselect everything. And you will see that my triangle, my hexagon, and my poor little sea urchin have gotten very distinctly warped whereas my whatever this is, octagon or whatever, <laughs> and my little uh, tiny star here have not gotten warped. That's what we're looking for. Warp some, but not all. And you'll do that by selecting before you apply the warp tool. Again, these should all have different strokes and fills, and please be careful to overlap. We're going to go now to the fifth box. Whoops, we forgot to do clipping mask, didn't we? Let's do that real quick. Black selection tool. Select the box, Object, Arrange, Bring to Front. Black Selection Tool, select everything with the selection marquee, Object, Clipping Mask, Make. Deselect to make sure everything worked well, and then go to the White Selection Tool so that you can select out of this group just one object, that path around the edge. Make sure the stroke icon's in front, find black somewhere, and select a way to make sure it all worked. There you go. Please note that, like with the ellipses, this square is not complete because it doesn't have strokes and fills. In the fifth box, you are going to be uh, working with the pen tool. The pen tool is one of our most challenging and powerful tools. It's got a whole bunch of other things underneath it, um, but they're all accessible with keyboard shortcuts very easily when you're using the pen tool, so you probably won't be digging them out too much. Right now, just select the pen tool itself. You get a little pen icon, and the pen tool makes anchor points and paths between the anchor points. So it will make critters very much like this box, for example, which has anchor points at the corners and paths between the anchor points. It will make closed shapes, in other words, but with the pen tool, you get to draw them yourself. It makes two kinds of anchor points. The first you make simply by clicking and releasing, and then move your cursor without dragging it, in other words, unclicked. So you're going to move your cursor around after you've clicked and released. You're just going to move it around and see what happens, and you'll see that you've got an anchor point with a line coming out of it. It's following your pen tool around, hoping that at some point you will click and it will know where you want the line to end. So I'm going to click right there. And now I've got another anchor point. And as I move my released uh, cursor, um, I'm not dragging it. It's just clicked and released. Um, I get a chance to draw that the next anchor point wherever I want. And this line is following me around as if I were a magnet of some kind. I'm going to click there, and then I'm going to go back towards my first anchor point. And as I approach it, you will notice that a little circle appears just below my cursor and to the right. That circle is Illustrator's sign that if I click right now, and I'm about to do it, there we go, that the um, shape will be filled and completed. Now, as I move my pen away, I don't get any um, little stringy line following me. It's because, it's because I've completed a shape. This is a live illustrator shape, just like an ellipse or a rounded rectangle. You can fill it, you can stroke it, and I want you to do that for sure. But right now we're going to um, learn how to do the other kind of anchor point, 
when you click and drag with the pen tool, something very weird happens. Notice how as I click and drag, I haven't released my mouse, in other words, I'm still dragging. A um, couple of kind of little like antennas come out of that anchor point and the direction that they go in depends on where I drag my mouse. Whenever I let go, however, something very different is going to happen. When I let go and release the, the mouse, a curvy string follows my pen tool this time, kind of like a piece of mozzarella cheese from a pizza. It just won't let go of that anchor point. And it's waiting again for me to tell it where I want to stop the, the uh, path and create a new anchor point. So the two little antenna that first came out of the anchor point are handles, and those are later on going to be used to control the angle and the strength of the curve that comes out of the anchor point. This is what we call a smooth anchor point, and the lines that come out of it are curved. So the mozzarella cheese is the actual line, and whenever I click and drag again, I get more little handles coming out, but when I release, then I see my actual line. The little antennas with the dots on the end are controllers. They are not the line you are drawing. The curved thing that is following your pen tool is the line. I'm going to click again and drag. I'm going to click again and drag. And now I'm going to go back to my original anchor point. I'm looking for that little zero just down to the right of my pen tool and I'm going to click and I have a closed shape. Now nothing is following me because my shape is closed. Let's go back up and this time we're going to choose the um, white selection tool because instead of selecting the whole object I just want to drag on one of the handles and you will see that those handles there's one, those handles are um, used to then edit the line that you have made. So I can change the direction of a curve, I can change the strength of a curve, I can uh, change whether a curve is right side up or inside out, like that. Um, you can have a lot of fun with the, um, with the curves that you create with the pen tool. It's not very intuitive when you first start. It takes practice, but um, you'll get that practice in this class. So the pen tool, again, even with the uh, curved anchor points, it does make shapes that can be filled. I'm now going to take my black selection tool, select the whole thing, and move it into my box a little bit more. I'm going to make one more shape with my uh, pen tool here, and this is going to have a combination of angled anchor points like that and smooth anchor points where I drag. So if I click and release, I get an angled anchor point. See how sharp it is there? But if I click and drag, I get a smooth anchor point. Click and release, click and drag. And I'm going to go back, I'm going to look for that curved shape. I mean the um, little zero that, makes, that allows me to complete my curvy shape here. So we're now going to uh, stroke and fill these, obviously. But um, I'm going to let leave that up to you because the um, um, Time's a waste in here. And <laughs> I want to just run through Clipping Mask again. So for Clipping Mask, Black Selection Tool, bring the um, box itself, the cookie cutter, to the front. Uh, black Selection Tool, select everything that's associated with the cookie cutter, all the cookie dough, and make your Clipping Mask. Select away to make sure everything's good. White Selection Tool. Grab the path itself, make sure the path icon is in the front or the stroke icon, and then make it black again. Okay, in the last box, you're to use three of the tools, at least, that you've explored in the previous, previous five boxes. Again, I hope you'll have lots of fun with the um, strokes and fills as we did in the first two boxes here. And the um, last box requires you to fill the background of the value. I think you have everything that you need in order to do this at this point, but um, do remember that if you start by filling this box with a value, by selecting it, say, and filling it with a value, you could use a value like that, you could use a visual value from a pattern, 
you could use a gradient. Let's give it a uh, radial gradient this time. And of course you can mess with these gradients and uh, do all sorts of uh, fun things with the uh, proportions of the uh, and the angles and the um, orientation of the fill and everything. But, so you can give it a value in any way that you like. But remember that if you um, use clipping mask, that you will have to put that value back in at the end by selecting it with the white selection tool. Just as you have to put the line back around it at the end by selecting it with the white selection tool. So um, you may wish to just wait and put the value in at the very end if it's something complicated so you don't have to do it twice. I think that you now know everything that you need to know in order to fill these boxes. I hope you'll have a lot of fun. I hope you'll push your variations far, far, far so that you get lots of practice in the things that Illustrator will do.